One of these days, you will play your favorite game for the last time. Go ahead, cry, sh your pants, but whether you like it or not, it's kinda true. Of course you could always go back and revisit them, but the point being is that it's inevitable. One specific day, you'll most likely forget to hop back on, and before you know it, you'll slowly drift away from the very games you've dropped hundreds of hours on, and there's nothing you could do about it. Anyways, today I've decided that I'll be quitting Rainbow Six Siege altogether. Yup, I'm done playing this game, and I'm not playing it again. That means no more R6 videos, no more R6 related posts, and definitely and absolutely no more R6 Reddit. Now I know this won't come as a surprise considering the thousands of videos criticizing this game about how broken it is and how bad it is, but forget about all that because I have my own unique reasons for leaving this game. And after two whole years, I've decided that enough is enough. I'm gonna share my experience with this game from the very beginning and how it transpired into to me, leaving this game for good. In July 2016, a group of my friends happened to be playing this brand new game. Hey, what's this game about? I asked. They replied with, what are you, stupid or something? That is exactly when 15 year old me started playing Rainbow Six Siege, around the time Operation Dustline was coming to an end. Uh, Strat, everyone picks an operator with the barbed wire. You can only kill an enemy if they are in the barbed wire. Little did I know that this would become my newfound addiction. Me and my buddies would hop on after school every day and grind till we reached platinum. We never reached it because we sucked, but that didn't stop us from having our moments. We team killed, spawn peaked, broke the game, had operators bend over onto Chaka's turret. Look, the game was nowhere near perfect, but it was the greatest thing to us at the time. It was flawed, but damn was it fun. And when things got fun, I did exactly what any kid with a YouTube channel would do. I started recording and editing Siege videos. And I kept doing that for the next 5 years. That brings us to January of 2020. I uploaded what presumably would have been my last Siege video ever. I was sick and tired of this game and I couldn't even stand the idea of making another video. And it wasn't just me, everyone I knew began throwing in the towel. We had this recurring thing where we'd hop on for a single match and then we'd leave by the end of it. I don't play this game anymore, I don't like this game, I'm gonna make some problems. There's a million other games in the market better than this game. This game just does not scratch yeah. the same itch. For real though, it's just like not in a good spot right now. Yeah, I wanna make Spongebob it, I wanna make Spongebob it. He went to go make Spongebob, everyone else deleted the game, and I was stuck here wondering, where did it all go wrong? Maybe it was boredom, or perhaps we've gotten burnt out after playing for all these years. However, I knew there was more to it, and I... Uh, uh, <sighs> Why, hello there, sexy. And it wasn't until a few months later we realized we weren't the only ones in this dilemma. I logged into Twitter one day, and amidst all the... Garbage on my feed. I notice a familiar name in an unfamiliar place. Hashtag Save Siege is trending. Shortly after, a couple of videos began popping up on my recommended, all of them having to do with R6 and his troubling state. I'm sure some of you know that the community around Siege has kind of been on fire lately. I'm pretty much done with Siege. I say pretty much because I mainly just mean I've given up playing to win. Chat wanted to make a list of all the things that we think are basically making the game bad, things that we want to be changed. Some professional players have even announced their leave due to how bad it's gotten. With all this rising tension and an increase in complaints surrounding the game's current situation, it's safe enough to say that the game has gone downhill. The community's on fire, players are unhappy, Tom Clancy is dead. And his beloved franchise is soon to fall off, nothing is done about this mess. Keep in mind, this was nearly two years ago, and a lot of these problems are still just as prevalent. I'm talking constant bugs and glitches, hackers and cheaters, toxicity and racism, hey, mouse and keyboard on console, lack of content, boring game modes, terrible map changes, no backwards compatibility, Bitcoin miners, identity theft, malware, credit card fraud, IP address leaks, computers are blowing up. Okay, maybe that last part was a little over-exaggerated, and the game's probably not as bad as it once was. I'm going off of a list that I made about a year ago, and honestly, I've barely played the game ever since, so I don't know. What I do know is that the game seems to be in a better state. The devs had a Q&A where they went over all types of feedback, and we're expected to see a lot of new improvements in content this year. And from the looks of it, people seem to be happy about it. So, what is there to complain about? Well, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how this isn't going to be about criticizing the game and saying, you, Tom Clancy. And the reason being is that I don't really care about the state of this game. Yeah, yeah, I know. And trust me, if I did care, I would have deleted this game ages ago when it was at its worst state. I don't play ranked anymore. I find bugs and glitches to be pretty entertaining. And believe it or not, I've actually never came across a hacker. And you bet if I ever did, one big fat commission thumbnail with some generic ass title. What I'm trying to say is that, yeah, maybe some of these recent changes kinda did suck. But it wasn't enough to make me pull the plug on Siege. The main thing that kept me attached to the game wasn't the game itself, but rather, a certain aspect to the game that was quite relevant a few years ago that I cherished more than anything else. Yes! 
Отлично под это место! Now I know what you're thinking. What the hell did I just watch? Or you might know exactly what this is. Either way, let me explain. What you just saw right there was an assortment of clips that fall under a genre of editing known as meme touch, which can be defined as a hyper-edited montage that utilizes various types of memes, sound effects, and soundtracks. The last time you might have seen something like this would have been years ago, back when it was once at the pinnacle of Rainbow Six Siege content. YouTubers such as Anthony Pair One, Marley, Bikini Bodie, Natty K, Boson Bunch, and even Two Mad kickstarted their channels off with R6 meme touches. This whole new form of content attracted all the attention, and shortly enough, their videos had amassed millions of views, numbers you wouldn't even imagine on any Siege video today. And the formula was simple, a montage mixed with memes, or honestly anything you want it to be. Its unconventional nature allowed all types of creative ideas and concepts, things you would have never thought of in a gaming video. The genre even gave rise to several new artists and musical mashups due to his crucial involvement in the meme touch scene. And I was hooked. Not only was I consuming these videos like it was crack, I wanted to take a crack at making one myself. Yeah, so mine's turned out to be complete dog sh**, but I still persisted at it. The process involved recording all types of clips, finding the perfect track, implementing some of my favorite memes, then either try to come up with something unique, or imitate some of my favorite creators. There was a bit of a learning curve to get through, but it was damn well worth it now that I look back at it. On top of that, the community surrounding it made it even better, where I'd find several different creators who were truly passionate about this stuff, a lot of them who I'm still friends with to this day. At this point, it was clear to me that this was everything that I've ever wanted. Meme Tages just gave me a whole new reason to play the game. And while I did enjoy the game itself, I found myself falling in love with the creation of R6 content more than anything else. And I was having the time of my life. With this newfound passion, all that was left was to continue playing Siege and continue making content for it. Or so I thought. All good things eventually come to an end. So, when all of this started going downhill, we all saw it coming. A lot of the channels I watched either stopped uploading or moved on to other content, which I really can't blame them. Everyone has their own reasons. But I guess the main thing was that it just wasn't efficient enough to consistently upload for an audience that's losing its viewership. And for those like me, who are still trying to grow and preserve the editing style, we were out of luck. Simply posting a clip on the R6 Reddit would be met with a ton of negative feedback, several comments asking to just let this format die out and that it's nearly unwatchable. Former Siege content creator PB and Slay, known for his incredible animations and editing, would constantly have his posts taken down despite none of them breaking any of the rules. Now, he no longer does any creative work for Siege, along with a lot of other talented creators just like him who decided to give up on this. It felt pointless to continue working on something that nobody was interested in anymore. The videos that you see up on my channel now was my attempt at trying a hybrid between meme touches and funny moments, in hopes of it going somewhere, but all that did was just temporarily fill that empty void. By now, the game just wasn't the same game that I once enjoyed back when I had a reason to play it. Playing it as it was now just went stale very quickly, hence why everyone I played with would end up quitting after one match, then eventually never to come back to it ever again. So, my only option at this point was to do exactly what anyone else would do in this situation, and that was to just move on. It was until one random night, I revisited some of my old Siege videos, that reminded me of all that this game meant to me. I started with the first video, where I tested out my new Elgato HD60, and I remember how excited I was to finally record gameplay, so I threw together a short little montage. Then the videos following that were a bunch of funny moments I made with an old friend group I had from high school. We'd play ranked almost every day, and in one of those videos, we found this hilarious Chichaka main with a Russian accent, who actually turned out to be a really cool guy we'd play with regularly. Don't ask me how I did it, but that video was one of my first ever meme touches. And then there was another video, or rather an unlisted livestream of us playing Siege during the last few minutes of 2018. It was one emotional stream, as we looked back at all the good that's happened so far. But we were a little bit worried, since things were going to be a whole lot more different after our graduation in a few more months. And that's exactly what happened. 
I haven't spoken to any of those guys ever since, and that happened to be one of our last times playing together. Now, I could go on and on about every last video, but the main point is that these videos and recordings were all that I had left of those days that I'd nearly forgot existed. A time in my life where I'd just hop on to play with friends and record whatever came out of it simply because we were having so much fun. But, as I've said at the start, one of these days you'll play your favorite game for the last time. And at the time of these recordings, I had no idea that these moments would turn out to be one of our last. And it was hard holding back those tears, looking back at a time that's impossible to bring back, regardless of whatever update or changes is made to the game. However, at the end of it all, I was rather glad to be able to look back at a whole collection of different Siege videos. They might have not meant anything to me back then, but they certainly do now, cause I could revisit some of my happiest and most creative moments through these videos, and I couldn't have been more grateful for a game that inspired me to create those memories that could forever be looked back on. Rainbow Six Siege won't ever be the same as it once was, and neither can I expect it to after six whole years. But knowing that my time spent on it back then was one of the most fun I've ever had makes me happy to have ended my experience with Siege on a good note.